Let's get straight to our headliner this morning, Republican Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas. He's the author of the book Sacred Duty and a member of the Armed Services Committee. Senator, good morning and great to have you in America's newsroom this morning. Thank you. Good morning. So is the pressure we're putting on, on Iran working? Yes, it is. Let's remember, this is the first time in 40 years the United States has this strategic initiative against Iran. We've imposed crushing sanctions on them over the last 13 months since President Trump withdrew from the nuclear deal. That's brought their economy into a recession, and with the new oil sanctions, as well as the sanctions President Trump announced yesterday, they could be heading to depression, into a depression. Uh, that's one reason why they're lashing out, is they know that time is not on their side and that we have a strong and growing coalition to counteract their campaign of terror across the Middle East, as well as their imperial ambitions. But what does that mean for diplomacy if now in Iran, in response to these additional sanctions, says that the door to diplomacy is closed? Well, they may say that, Sandra, but ultimately Iran is facing fewer and fewer choices. As we heard earlier, they have a lot of mouths to feed in Yemen and Syria and Lebanon and Iraq for supporting terrorist groups like Hamas and Hezbollah or rebels trying to gain power in Yemen. Uh, given all the money that they've lost over the last 13 months in the face of these U.S. sanctions, they face fewer and fewer good choices. The point of the sanctions regime all along has been not just to get a better nuclear deal, which cuts off Iran's path to a nuclear weapon forever, but also to stop their campaign of terror throughout the Middle East. Senator Trace Gallagher, thank you for joining us. I want to play this soundbite for you from the Iranian ambassador to the UN about starting a dialogue with Washington. Watch this. You cannot start a dialogue with somebody who is threatening you, who is intimidating you. How can we start a dialogue with somebody whose primary uh, preoccupation uh, is, is to put more sanctions on, on Iran? So you have the Iranian foreign minister saying, look, diplomacy is dead. You have John Bolton coming out saying they just need to walk through that door. And then you have the Iranian president saying, well, we could if they would lift the sanctions. I mean, they're not in a very good position to negotiate right now. No, that's the whole point of the maximum pressure campaign. Iran is in one of the weakest positions it's faced in 40 years. The maximum pressure campaign, again, has brought their economy to the precipice of a depression. And that's the way you get negotiating leverage into going into any kind of diplomatic negotiation. They may say things now like the door to diplomacy is closed, you can't negotiate with someone who's putting sanctions on you. But history belies those statements and common sense says that Iran ultimately is facing a tighter and tighter set of boundaries around its behavior as we crush its economy. An opinion piece in the Wall Street Journal this morning by Walter Russell Mead, Senator, writes this, the key to the president's Iran policy is that his nose for power tells him Iran is weaker and the U.S. is stronger than the foreign policy establishment believes. What Mr. Trump wants is a deal with Iran that matches his sense of the relative power of the two countries. How do you respond to those who criticize the president's prudence here uh, and, and perhaps interpreted that as weakness? Well, Walter Russell Mead is right that the United States has much more power than Iran does. That's always been the case since we're the world's superpower, but it's especially the case over these last 13 months as the sanctions have taken hold and as the United States continues to grow in our production of oil or gas. It gives us so much more leverage against Iran than we had 10 or certainly 20 years ago. So there's no doubt that we are negotiating for a position of strength. Those who say the president uh, made a mistake last week uh, when he did not take military action for the shoot down of American aircraft, I would say should heed the president's words over the weekend that they should not mistake restraint for weakness and that if Iran were to attack an Amer a manned American aircraft or a naval ship or certainly harm an American citizen, I think the president's term was they would be obliterated. Yeah, there was a conversation last night on the story between your colleague Rand Paul and Martha McCallum about whether or not the U.S. should have pulled out on the Iranian deal. I want to play this and get your, get your response, Senator. Listen. Because we pulled out of an agreement that Iran was actually adhering to, the Iranians feel like, you know, we're not acting in a good faith manner. So, so you believe that we should have stayed in that agreement? You know, I didn't agree with the fact that we gave up the money early. The problem is that's already done. That was a carrot, but we gave up the carrot too easily. But now that it's gone, we have no other carrots. All we have is stick. But we have other tools at our disposal than sticks. Is, is that a fair assessment, Senator? 
Well, the sticks have been pretty effective uh, for the last 13 months since we withdrew from the nuclear deal, which was a terribly flawed deal, not just because it let Iran become a nuclear power in 10 to 15 years, mm -hmm. the relative blink of an eye in the life of a nation, but because it didn't address Iran's campaign of terror and regional aggression throughout the Middle East against many of our key partners. As the President has said, he stands ready to negotiate a much better nuclear deal if Iran will simply pull in its horns. We're not asking Iran for much. We're asking Iran to behave like a normal civilized nation, to quit supplying missiles that are shot into its neighbor's territory, or try to overthrow the governments of neighboring countries, attacking what? shipping on the high seas. Those are relatively simple things to ask of a nation. Senator, what is your level, and before we move on, your level of optimism that, that the United States will be able to decrease tensions with Iran and that some sort of deal will be able to be reached? Well, I, I think a healthy skepticism is warranted when you're dealing with the Ayatollahs who have been America's implacable enemies now for 40 years. It's not the United States, though, that are increasing these tensions. It's Iran who's clearly trying to increase tensions over the last two months because of the economic straitjacket our sanctions have placed upon them. Now, bring it back home here to uh, our southern border as um, talks over immigration, what to do next to stem the flow of illegal immigration over our southern border. Mexico has now deployed 15,000 forces uh, to their north to help stem the flow of that migration over our border. Uh, Vice President Mike Pence is tweeting on that, uh, talking about Mexico following through on its promises. He writes Mexico is keeping its promise and now sending 15,000 troops to the border to help with the crisis. Meanwhile, Dems won't fund beds for migrant children. Mexico continues to do more than congressional Dems to secure our border. And it's it's time for them to step up. Your thoughts on the current situation at our border? Well, first, the money that Congress may provide for more beds on our border uh, or more judges to process these claims of asylum, almost all of which are bogus, is really a stopgap measure. The way to prevent the crisis you see at our southern border is to prevent Central Americans from coming to our border in the first place. And I have to commend the President and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo for the deal they struck with Mexico just a few weeks ago, uh, using some pressure as well to get those troops in Mexico up to their northern border as well as Mexico's southern border uh, because they can stop the flow of Central Americans into their country. And that's much farther away than it is to stop them from getting across our border with Mexico. I mean, stopping them there is the equivalent of trying to stop a drive in football on the goal line. Stopping them on Mexico's southern border is like stopping them on the opponent's side of the field. And Senator, but that's the ultimate solution to this crisis. And I don't think people have understood enough that, that Mexico does not want to do this. I mean, they sent 6,500 troops, as you say, to the southern border with Guatemala and Belize, and now 15,000 troops to the north. That right there, because Mexico is very averse to doing this kind of stuff, is a testament to the fact that they feel like their feet were put to the fire and now they are complying. That's right, Trace. So, so this is not something Mexico has done in the past. It's really not even something they committed to do in the past. But a few weeks ago, the president threatened that he would impose tariffs on Mexico and he would gradually increase those tariffs if Mexico didn't live up to its obligations as our neighbor to the south to help us control the flow of Central Americans through its country, going over a thousand miles to get to our border. Because of the negotiations the president and Secretary Pompeo engaged in, we've seen Mexico finally taking some real steps to try to defend their own sovereignty, which is a means to protecting our sovereignty at our southern border. What impact did the president's threat of tariffs have on this situation? I don't think you can deny the impact it had. I mean, he threatened those tariffs, and Mexico sent a high-level delegation straight to Washington. And within a matter of days, they had made many new commitments, not just these troop deployments, but also trying to keep more of these migrants in Mexico while they process their claims of asylum, which, as I say, are mostly bogus. And now you're seeing them deliver on those promises, in part, again, because of the president's threat of tariffs against Mexico. Well, that promise was made June 7th, and they had a period of uh, uh, 45 days to follow through on that. Looks like they're moving in that direction. We'll see how that all ends up. Senator Tom Cotton, appreciate you coming on America's Newsroom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.